everybody, Chris here with Clean Spores Woodworking Shop. Last time we looked at the shark, we were finishing up the wiring and we talked about uh, the label being upside down. Well, shark sent us a new sticker. So today we're gonna get the new sticker installed and I'm gonna show you how we sort of tidied up the cable management coming off the side of the machine. So I guess first things first, let's dive right in and get this sticker replacing this one that's upside down. All right, so how we're gonna do this is carefully, I hope. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it like this and try this little tape trick to get it sort of lined up with the previous one and then lock that in and lock that in. And I do have a uh, one of our easy spreaders. We use this for, for epoxy spreading and a variety of other things. Uh, but because it sort of looks like a squeegee, this does serve a pretty good purpose. I have cleaned the old label. So I'm just gonna start right here in the middle and work my way straight down, peeling the backing off and hope everything lines up. That looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna work my way out to the corner, out to the corner, peel the tape back out to that corner. Maybe peel the tape, there we go. And back out to that corner. So now I'm just gonna just make sure I got all the air bubbles out, which it looks pretty good. There we go. Now we have the Shark E-Cool system. When you read it, you actually read it right side up. You don't have to stand on your head, which is a pretty good thing. So thanks Shark for sending us the updated sticker. And uh, now let's take a look at the rest of the cable that we did when we upgraded this machine to that new water-cooled spindle, the three horsepower water-cooled spindle. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so what we did was we kind of did these hoses coming through here and they're coming down this wire chain. Um, underneath here and they come out. So how I ended up running these, just in case you're curious, is they come out the side and I did wire wire tie them to the bottom of the hose section or the cable section that's here. So this will travel as the, the, the gantry travels back and forth, so will this. So I left enough slack here on our, on our end so this has plenty of freedom to go front to back without any problems or, or binding. I also zip tied uh, these cables, uh, both of these, these cables coming down and to a certain point down here. And from there, it breaks off to the machine. Now, my setup here, what we use this machine for a lot is for demonstrations and shows and different things like that. So I needed it for portability. So I've got this set up here with a magnetic power bar. In your case, in your home, if it's not moving around, you may have this thing hard mounted up top so it's not in the way. In my case, we do need that, that convenience. So I've got this set up here. I've got the power cable that can quickly plug into any outlet. The rest of this, it operates a lot of these things. So whether you're doing the main controller or the VFE, VF um, converter, doesn't matter. This allows us the functionality and quick convenience without the cables getting in the way. And when I do need to transport the unit, it's easy for me to unplug everything and, or excuse me, unplug the main unit, have it all wrapped here, and it stays in place because of the magnetic power bar. So this was an easy way that I found to do it. If this was gonna be set up in a shop and not moved, certainly uh, wire tying or, or zip tying these somewhere um, out of the way would be the, the ideal way to go. And also being able to put this somewhere where it's not gonna move uh, as well. Um, but again, because I do mind portability, I like to take this apart uh, when I travel, just to make sure this box stays secure. And this is screwed down to this platform, which is also mounted to the frame. So um, easy little quick cable management. This is not long enough to feed all the way down through this. So this was the best solution I could come up with temporarily uh, to be able to make it where when, when it's in operation, this is not gonna get caught up on anything because that's, that's huge. You wanna make sure this is not gonna get caught while you're using the machine uh, or else you might not like the result. So this is what we did on ours. I think it works pretty well. I've taken it to two different places so far and had great results with it. And I think if you needed to do something similar to yours, zip ties are your friend and uh, just find the most convenient way and the safest way to be able to do that where the wires won't get caught. So, well, this is what we did with ours. I'm uh, gonna continue to do some modifications of this over time. We've got a few projects lined up and looking forward to seeing what all we can do with this machine. I'm being inspired by some of the other videos that we've done with uh, Chris and his turning Thursday, and I may try to do some turning projects, but not necessarily turning, doing them uh, 
two-sided projects on the machine. So stay tuned to see what all we do with the Shark. There'll be a lot coming up. And um, hey, this is Chris with uh, Clean Sports Woodworking Shop talking about the Shark um, HD 500. And uh, hey, good luck with yours. If you got questions, leave them down below. We'll be happy to respond as best we can. So y'all have a great day. We'll see you soon.